This week we're very busy. Um, we're currently working on our production of Sleeping Beauty. We're just making those final adjustments and a little bit of refinement to bring the costumes back up to their very best. It's been on stage every day this week in rehearsal and it's a chance for us to make those final adjustments, just some refinement of the look and some little tweaks with the fit. This is our current Lilac Fairy. Um, we're actually looking at Claire Calvert's costume here. I think it's a very striking design, very striking design. Our current Sleeping Beauty is inspired by the original designs by Oliver Messel. The Royal Ballet Company first did Sleeping Beauty in 1945, and these costumes are inspired by those original designs. Lilac flowers go from a very deep purple, sort of bordering on a scarlet. Then other plants will have the lilac flower and the colour that we know as lilac, move through paler lilacs, and then work our way up to the top of the costume where you would have a white lilac flower. And I think these tendrils here look very pretty. These will move with the costume as the dancer dances. And then making its way across the bodice and down onto the skirt is quite a striking shape here with the lilac tree leaves. And just working its way like a vine is a plastic product called crin, crinoline. And this is a tubed crinoline and it makes a very nice bark. It can be painted, it can be covered. In this instance, it's painted and works its way down to the top skirt. This particular costume, as you can see, has a variety of fabrics. We have obviously the net underskirt. This is what we call the plate. Then a soft net for a top skirt. On top of here, we have a light silk, chiffon silk, which is mounted onto a stiff net. This gives it its shape, but keeps it quite diaphanous. You can see through there and you can see a hint of the deep pink of the top skirt underneath. Has a fine white net peaked fringe there and a white satin scroll that follows the edge. The leaves are of a velvet mounted onto a backing fabric and then top stitched here. The bodice is of a lurex brocade. Onto here are some hot stones. These are these little stones that we use a lot in costume. They're actually attached, you just heat them and then they stick to the costume and hopefully they survive the laundry. I think one of the most important parts of the tutu is, of course, the underneath. Um, this is all the hard work that supports the dress, and I always think it's very interesting to see this side of the tutu. Here, this is what we call the tutu plate. It's made completely of net. This particular tutu has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers, and then a top skirt of pink. These can vary. A small tutu may be only, you know, have maybe six or seven, or we could have a larger tutu which may go up to 14 or 15. Sometimes this is a requirement of the designer who may want a large tutu or a small tutu, um, or it may be that we scale down for the dancer. A tiny ballerina wouldn't want and wouldn't look good in a huge tutu. And um, these layers of net are all held together with what we call swing catches these little threads. And these hold the various layers together. And this stops the tutu when it's bouncing around, separating and looking a bit messy. And if you wanted a very slim tutu, those threads would be very short and pull the nets together. If you want a nice fluffy tutu, then these threads will be quite long. But also in here, we do have a metal hoop. I've got my fingers on it. You won't be able to see it, but I'm holding it now. So this metal hoop goes around the skirt at about this layer, this level here. And this also helps to support the skirt. It's quite a big circle, so it does need a lot of support. The most important thing with ballet costume is movement, obviously. It's quite hard sometimes to ask a dancer to, to wear some of our designs because it does restrict their movement. I know you, you need to be comfortable, but yeah. I know we also like to have it quite snug. Could it be a little bit tighter? What do you think? So I can feel, see a little bit of wrinkling yeah. here. I think maybe a bit too much. Huh? We yeah. should, we'll probably it let that go. Yeah. It's difficult because, you know, you want to be able to move in it and I have to do, like, quite a lot of bending and things like that. And say, so if the costume's too tight, then okay. you then can't. Let's, yeah. yeah. I think it... I mean, it's acceptable. Yeah. I'm really just looking yeah. at tiny things. Um, the yeah. thing is, you've got to wear it through the whole ballet, haven't yeah. you? So that's quite, yeah. that's, that's quite a long time to be uncomfortable if yeah. you are.
Okay. The Lilac Fairy is the only character that appears in every act of the ballet. I mean, there are three acts and the Lilac Fairy is there with every character as the ballet um, tells its story. It's a very demanding role and the costume has to support that. So this costume needs to be maybe a little bit stronger than other tutus because it's got to survive through the whole length of the ballet. Obviously, the easier it is to move in a costume, the better. I think tutus are beautiful, like, to stand and look at. They're not always the most comfortable thing to wear. But when you see someone in a tutu, you immediately think ballet, mm. even if they're like, if someone was just walking down the street, <laughs> you know, it's... Goes with point yeah, shoes. Yeah, goes with point tight. shoes and, yeah, yeah. I guess it's kind of, like, when you wear a tutu, you feel like a ballerina. You feel, you know, beautiful. I think it's a very special role, because obviously there's Aurora and there's the prince, but the Lilac Fairy is kind of like, you know, the fairy godmother, the sort of guider throughout the whole story. So there's... The prologue's hard, it's a hard technical solo, but then um, from like act one to act three, it's a lot of mime and acting, and which, strangely enough, is quite difficult. And when, when I was first learning it, I think two years ago when we did it, it's probably the more scary bit to go out there and be stood there and, you know, miming to a principal and sort of... You know, not being totally told exactly what to do. As ballet dancers, we're usually told, this is how you point your mm. foot, this is how you do a plie. But when you're kind of given that freedom to put your own sort of thoughts and feelings into something, it does make it a little bit more nerve-wracking because people are watching a part of you, not just, you know, the lilac fairy. It's everyone's sort of a bit different when they do it.